What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams, and I am busting my butt here in the Reef Builder studio. I've been showing you some dedicated videos, and it have occurred to me today that it's been a while since we had a real walkthrough of the studio to kind of show you the progress, the updates, the projects, et cetera, et cetera. So I got my man, Evan, holding the camera. And if you look behind me, I finally, finally got the stand finished. Um, I want to thank everyone for their feedback on uh, the shoddy carpentry that I had done on this before, but I kind of followed the template for a lot of aquarium stands, put some plywood, uh, locked up all the legs on the front and back, um, and I still have room to bolt this to the back wall. So today is actually the first day that we've started filling these vats. I've had these vats since like October, maybe September, finally filling the vats. The stand is done and we're just now starting to get, to get getting started on some plumbing. Um, we're just going to be draining gravity feeding from this for now, but eventually this is going to build up into a nice uh, recirculating and pump fed water distribution system. <clears throat> I think what we'll do is have one that's constantly seawater and the other one will be fresh water. So yeah, after all this time, we finally have a real vat of water to go and uh, yeah I'm excited so along those same lines um, it has been really fun and it's such a privilege to be able to use straight untreated nothing to it tap water here in Colorado and Golden we have that famous really really good water but you know I have so many reverse osmosis and water purification systems so we just started dabbling in what we were gonna do because I have like countless canisters so um, I really don't believe in stripping everything away from the water, just to reconstitute it with everything that you could possibly, that, that's in, in the seawater mix. Um, so for starters, I think the standard protocol here is gonna be uh, mechanical filtration, a couple carbon blocks. We started out with uh, the DI, this was DI on straight tap. So we were able to watch this change colors like almost before our eyes. So the only thing I really wanna take out of the water is silicate. We do have some silicates here in the water from all the rocks and stuff. So I am going to experiment with um, aluminum oxide, the white beads, GFO is the brown stuff, and also the um, uh, phosphate absorbing resins, because I know that's really, really, really concentrated. So if anybody out there knows what's actually more effective, GFO or aluminum oxide, I kind of would like to know. So this is just the beginnings, the baby steps of our water pur purification here. I will not be using an RO uh, membrane for the general water, but I am gonna set up a separate loop, RO membrane, all the bells and whistles, so we can have some ultra pure water, mostly to um, use for making our stock solutions. Um, so we got our bright well buffer, calcium and magnesium on these cool little dispensers, graduated with a big enough cup, big, big enough uh, uh, spot here so I can pour it right in, very nice. Um, so yeah, this is the workshop. It's a little bit messy, but I just kind of, I wanted to keep it real for you guys a little bit so you could see what's happening. Let's take a look at some tanks, shall we? Here is <laughs> my five digit 400 gallon paperweight. Uh, we've been coasting on a lot of the other tanks, but the fact that I started putting together a list, a list here of what's gonna be needed for this tank means that I'm going to begin to assemble the things required for this tank. Um, the Planet Aquarium 400 gallon, that's got the metal frame, Starfire sides, and PVC bottom. This is gonna be super fun and I hope Hope to get this uh, flowing and some rocks marinating um, within the next couple months. Uh, what do we have? Over here, we've got a pile of brand new products. Um, so this is the uh, Zetlite Lancia 2. We're going to give that some love. Max Spec uh, Turbine Duo. It's a dual outlet uh, water pump. Got the brand new Vectra L2 here. And I haven't figured out how to do this yet. Now talk to Ecotech Marine. We're gonna have our first giveaway for crossing 50,000 subscribers. I think we're at just shy of 54,000 now. So there's gonna be an S1 and an M1 to give away. Sorry, sorry. 
a vector S2 and an M2 to give away. And this is gonna be used, and I'm gonna show this off a little bit more uh, here at the studio. So if you have any clever ideas <clears throat> for how to give away uh, these two vector pumps, I'm all ears. I don't wanna just kind of pick from the comments. Um, so if you have any creative ideas, let's do that. Um, ooh, very, very fun. Max Spec Air Aqua Duo. Very excited to use this protein skimmer. This is gonna get its own video because it's a really, really different type of protein skimmer that uses the Turbine Duo pump. That's gonna be super fun. And um, it won't be long before I have two Refled 90s to test out. I hope the arms are inside. I've never used them before. I saw them at my local store and they look good. And um, <clears throat> eventually we're gonna get more than two of those to put here on the Red Sea Monteport tank. Uh, so currently we're very thrilled with the Acro Optics. The Red Sea lights are gonna go on some of these other tanks uh, here shortly so I can get a feel for them before I put them on this display. All right, so what's happening? with the monitor port tank. Let's bring it around here. And um, since we're just now getting our vat going, we haven't done any serious water changes on many of the systems at all. Um, so this is ready for a water change. We're getting like cute small amounts of uh, hair algae, like the first tiny bit of hair algae of any of the tanks. And you might notice there's a lot of empty spots. Oh man, we tried so hard. We tried so hard to uh, cleanse everything before it went into this aquarium. But wouldn't you know it about, what was it, like six or eight weeks after getting this tank started, nudies started showing up. So we've been managing it, we've been managing it, we've been removing them. But, uh, was it, I think last week we took most of the biggest offenders and we moved them to a system over there. And we're gonna do our best to kind of like cleanse and purge any Monty uh, Pora eating Nudelbronk from this tank. So I thought uh, you guys would like to know <laughs> that no matter how much experience you have, um, it's possible to have super normal problems. And uh, yeah, right now we're just kind of manually dealing with it. And uh, we'll let you know how that goes. But we're gonna clean this tank very good, probably tomorrow, and uh, keep cleansing these monoporas. In the meantime, the Montes have looked great, even though they're being grazed on a little bit by these, uh, these pests and parasites. Um, so um, this tank is due for a little bit more polish. Uh, let me show you some of the other tanks we have going on. Still need to get this stand powder coated, so I'm waiting on a quote from a local like metalsmith dealer kind of jobby. Just checking my time here. Um, these displays here are looking really, really great. So these are gonna get the specific video focuses where I can tell you all about them, what they've been doing. This is the soft coral tank. Corals are growing super lush. This is the LPS tank. Uh, corals are growing super lush. The fish are looking great. This torch coral from Western Australia. I got it from uh, Ocean Reefs Marine Aquarium. The light is a little off right now, but we've got a green one a brown one, and then the orange tip one. And you can see they've been kind of popping this red uh, lobophilia here on the side. Um, and this one, this tank is due for me just, you know, even if a tank is not like super dirty on a periodic basis, you just want to get into it with both hands and just kind of feel it out and just look around and see what it is that's not obvious that needs to be taken care of. So um, I've got a little bit of Valonia popping up on this tank, but this Carib Sea Life Rock has actually been doing um, really, really well. Finally, this tank has really grown on me. When I first put it together, I was complaining that this tank had less character than uh, one elegant squirrel. Is that better color on the, on the? Yeah. Okay, so I just tweaked the light a little bit of the Kessel 360. Um, but otherwise, this is looking really good. We've got some sunburst antheus. One thing I'm not too thrilled about is you look at those two bubble corals. There's one bubble coral, branching bubble coral that's dead. And I've kept that branching bubble, it was a green branching bubble coral, one of my favorites. And I've kept it with bubble corals before, so I don't know if it got stung by the one next to it. I don't, I don't know what happened. Um, all right, what else do we have going on? We've got three coral flats here. Um, this is kind of turning into a lagoon. The uh, mangrove pods that I got from Julian are doing really, really well. Um, the AI Prime Fuge is growing the bejesus out of Ketomorpha in that basket right now. And uh, yeah, otherwise it's kind of a nice shuffling area. 
And uh, go ahead and show them what you discovered today are, uh, are uh, the big, huge, this has been a huge, huge Colorado sunburst for almost a year, I think. It's just been one huge one. Yesterday it was one, and today it is two. That's why it's all crazy and nasty and deflated looking. But it is actually, it doesn't even look like it's done splitting, does it? No. Yeah. Been, at this rate, maybe half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. And then right behind you, um, you could see we've got some of the Montes here. Evan gave them a really, really good look and a look good cleanse before putting them in here. But this will be a spot where we can keep a closer eye on them and uh, just make sure they're happy and healthy and whatnot. Um, what else do we have going on? Um, this is the acro system, kind of like the acro and goniopora system. Um, it's definitely doing so much better. We had an aptasia problem and some flatworms. That was probably due because I was feeding uh, this uh, Christmas worm rock tank very heavily. I never fed that heavily before. Uh, so that was to be uh, expected. Um, let's see, I put a, maybe a handful of peppermint shrimp and one bristletail file fish, and they're really going through and just knocking that back. So what else do we have? Uh, the Christmas rock worm tank looks amazing. There's a couple aptasias left, oh wow, on this rock right here. But otherwise, the color is insane. These uh, sun corals all open up really big at night. So very, very happy with this tank, especially adding the Nero 5 to this tank and the Maxpec Razor just, uh, just kind of like doubled the performance of the previous pump and the previous light and this tank really shows the part. What else do we, oh, just added these nifty little water level indicators using uh, transparent PVC. Um, Uniseals, man, I'm gonna do, figure out a way to do a video just on Uniseals, because these things are amazing. So you can see that this one right here um, is completely full, and over down here, you can see that it's about halfway. So this is a great way for us to uh, know what the water level is inside these tanks um, without having to open up the lid at a glance. At a glance information is like kind of like a, a big important part of the studio. Um, what else do we have? The quarantine tank, I just did that on the last video. The Vectralis Antheus, I've just started eating flake food and you guys know how I like my flake food. So we started them on frozen colonists, then uh, vitamin enriched freeze-dried colonists and now they're on like regular small flake um, and they're acting like fish you know that first feeding of the day that you know kind of begging and stuff and um, what's kind of cool is I finally got some Bengay cardinal fish in there and I'm thinking about doing a video on those because I got them from Petco and one of them was actually holding babies so that was super cool they were good size like 16 bucks you know so to get a pregnant male Bengay cardinal fish super clean from Petco was a super nice treat last weekend. Um, let's, let's see, I think we, should, we talked about the flagship reef not too long ago, mostly the Tinker's Butterflies. Um, these guys are going to be a fun little experiment because they eat everything, but it's kind of hit or miss what corals they want to eat. Like for example, there's the um, some orange Bam Bams. So they pick on those when they want to. So they don't, they're not always picking on them, but then like my purple monsters, oh, it looks like they hit them a little bit. Yeah, and, but like, for example, this green Colastria, the green candy, when it went in, they ripped off a little piece of flesh and then they've left it alone since. So it's gonna be kind of hit or miss with these guys if I can keep them in the reef. I don't want, you know, I don't want them to kind of compromise what this reef tank is about. It's gotta be all about the coral. So they might have to have, get a different tank here in the future. But the biggest change to this tank is uh, finally installed my first automatic uh, alkalinity monitor. This is the Alcatronic. And uh, the only reason you see a cable is because I haven't put the Dosetronic in there. But it's been a week and um, I'm actually kind of impressed. It was um, a little bit of a challenge to get it started get everything super calibrated. But I think for the last week, it's been writing between 8.2 and 8.5 DKH. So it's on action mode and it's taking care of business. The next thing to do for that tank is the dose tronic. So this is, this thing's gonna have, that's one channel of dosing. This is five channels of dosing. Look at those jumbo, jumbo heads. I'm really excited. Um, the only thing is, is like, it's really tight trying to get the, the tubes in here, but I think I would much rather have 
five channels that are just kind of a pain in the butt to get the, the tubing to, than three channels that are super accessible. Uh, four channels would just kind of be, uh, you know, hit or miss. Last but not least, the freshwater tank. I want to do a video on the freshwater tank. I hope you guys will let me do a video on the freshwater tank um, because I scooted it over and I elevated it off the ground a little bit. So it's a little bit more eye level for me because I'm a tall dude. Um, but what did I do? Yeah, pretty much like raised it. Um, it's got a lot of fish in here because it's got the gold dust mollies and the orange sailfin mollies that I want to acclimate to seawater. I've got some Blythe River uh, trifasciata rainbow fish, but this tank is primarily for the Altums. So I want to do a whole video on that. And then the other thing I did was just kind of clean up everything. Um, yeah, just dosing, dosing, CO2 dosing. Yeah, pretty, pretty good little dealy here. You can see there's actually a lot of bubbles um, rising up from the leaves. A surefire sign that this thing is doing well. And actually the plants have exploded in growth um, over the last couple of weeks. So, as you can see, we are staying very busy. We actually kind of have a short list of projects to complete. And then the studio will be like semi-finished as far as like the infrastructure and the foundation of this place. All right, so that is the update on the Reef Builder Studio. Um, right around the corner from a, a announcing some new merchandise. You guys have been asking for the t-shirts and I've been just uh, really crossing my T's and dot my I's to make sure those are gonna come out really great. Got the first sample yesterday. Um, like I said, stay tuned, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I'm gonna be giving away a Vector S2 and M2 very soon, thanks to Ecotech Marine. And uh, yeah, stuff here looking really good. I'm actually having a lot of fun. I think Evan is too. Uh, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the next video, the next update, or the next topic. So I hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you soon.